Um, a couple of stats. Um, you are, I believe, the face of what culture wrestling. You've got some great colleagues that you, you work with, but when I think of what culture wrestling, you're 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 front and center. You know, uh, team. Right, you, I appreciate it. You've got a team of real charismatic content creators at, at World Culture. Big up to all the boys and, and girls of World Culture. But Simon, you're the star of the show. You're the crown in the jewel. Um, the World the, the what Culture YouTube channel has over 2 million subscribers. I'm one of them. I think I'm one of them. I've got, I've got two accounts, actually. Thanks, <laughs> man. I'll three. take that. I work. That's fine. <laughs> um, on your own. And they've been had over 1 billion. That's, baby, one, that's million with a B. <laughs> One billion views on um, your content has on YouTube, as what culture channel. Yourself, three hundred and fifty thousand subscribers and over fifty million views total. I I got excited the other day when I saw the Get Back Up podcast got eight thousand subscribers, <laughs> so, and you got three fifty and you're smashing it. Man. I'm so proud of you. My question is this: You operate in two of the most toxic worlds in existence. And, I mean, wrestling and, and the internet and YouTube. And I generally, I, I want to know for myself, how do you stay so positive? How are you always smiling? How are you the nicest guy in the world? How does, I've never met anybody, I don't think I ever could meet anybody to say one negative thing about you. How do you stay you when you're operating in these two toxic worlds? Um. So... It's kind of a little bit of a story to that. And I think it kind of ties into what your podcast is about in general, right? It's it's a little bit of a journey because I, I absolutely wanted to get into the YouTube game. It wasn't an accident. I was trying, you know, I was making content. I was, I was seeing what I could get on with it. And then it's that classic thing, you know, everyone's an overnight success. Oh, no, actually, it's 10 years in the making, right? Now, it wasn't quite 10 years. But I've been sort of going away and I had some niche successes and stuff. So you get the odd kind of negativity. But it's so... Here and there, you can just, it gets you down. Some days, other days, you, you know, you flit it away. Um, but then when all of a sudden it did start heading in the right direction. I mean, I remember I went to, I'm making up the days here, but I, uh, I went and did a live stream with What Culture and I went to bed on a Friday. First one I did, hey guys, how you doing? Here's all my social media details. I woke up on a Saturday and I'd added 25,000 people to my social accounts. And I was like, overnight, I thought it was a glitch. I thought oh, Twitter's glitched out. I was like, no. And I was like, okay, this is, this is crazy. And at first, it really gets to you. Of course it does. Like, of course it does. Like, because all of a sudden, it's not just love that video, enjoy this video. You get stuff like, oh, go, you know, go F yourself. I hope you die. I'm going to come kill your family. And you're like, what, what, where, where did this intensity come from? But actually, there was a moment in time where it all clicked for me. So back in 2017, maybe, there was a little bit of a, a split in the what culture uh, personnel, right? I was part of what people like to be known as the OG crew and the rest of the OG crew, they left to do their own thing and more power to them. They're still smashing it now. Cultaholic, you know, you know, all, all, all doing, doing really, really well. Now, because they were going off to start their was own that 2017? thing. 2017? I think it was 2017 or 18. It, it was around then, right? Yeah, exactly. It was a long, terrifying, right? So they went off and blessed their hearts. You know, they mentioned to me, you know, we, we, you know, we're trying to start a new thing here. We're just going to do it the four of us or whatever it was like, yeah, bro, I'm happy. Don't worry about it, man. Just go out there and kill it. Now, because of the way the internet sees things and they just seen four of their favorites leave and I was still there, they were like, well, Simon must be calling the shots. <laughs> and Simon <laughs> must have decided to get rid of them all. So it was another, yeah, that's what, that's what it's like, right? Simon's Vincent Mann, Simon's Hulk Hogan, Simon's Eric Bischoff, screw this guy. So once again, went to bed, woke up, unbelievable. DMs, uh, app messages, whatever you call it. How did you do this, Miller? You know, die, Miller, die. Like the rock from like midnight. <laughs> um, and I remember I got one. Again, I don't remember the specifics because it was irrelevant. But one was real, real specific about... The, the equivalent was I'm going to find your mother and, you know, murder her. But with far more internet thing, I went, I'm shutting this down for 48 hours. I, I didn't plan to shut down for 48 hours. But I said, I'm just going to... Just, this is not good for you right now. Close it down. Let's figure things out. So two days later, as it turned out, I just had this moment, man. I had this epiphany and it kind of tied into the content I wanted to make too. I was like, none of it's true. So it doesn't matter. In the grand scale of life, this isn't a BBC breaking news story. It's super niche wrestling YouTube channel. So there's only a select few people care about it. So I went onto social media and I did this big old post 
And I just said, listen, guys, one, it's nothing to do with me. Two, I just want to let you know, I really hope those guys smash it. Three, I'm going to continue to keep smashing it. And four, I really love wrestling. So that's all that matters. And what I saw was 50% of people were still like pitchforks at dawn. But 50% of people were like, oh, yeah, great point, Simon. I never thought of it like that. And I was like, it, it was like, a, again, I just latched onto that. I was like, that's it. They're the people we want to worry about. Don't worry about anybody else. So whether that was just me building a thicker skin I, or not, I don't know. But now today, and I promise you this is true. I've told this to other people and they look at me like I'm a damn alien. I swear to you, man, if I check my social media in a minute or I check a comment and someone goes, Simon, this is the worst content I've ever seen. You suck. You should be fired. I'm going to burn your house down. My instant reaction is to go, you know what? This is the best thing ever because he's watched my, or they've watched my content and they are so emotionally involved that they've gone out of their way to send me a message and give me a little bit of their time. And if you had told me that, 10 years ago when I was trying to make it in this space, man, that would have been the best thing ever. You're telling me you care that much about what I have to say, that you disagree with it so passionately, you want me dead? I'm sorry, man. Look, that in general, that's a problem with the internet and it shouldn't happen because not everyone is built the way that I'm built. But in terms of me in January 2024, dude, I love it. I love it because it means, I think, again, he's going to be my... Um, uh, would you call it my my example for this whole podcast by complete accident? It's what John Cena used to say: "Boo me, cheer me, just don't go quiet." I need that reaction. I need that energy, and that's randomly that's where I've got to. So as soon as you start approaching things like that, there's a little bit of faking it to making it. But all of a sudden, you start realizing this is great. This is great. Your voice actually matters in the space that you operate within. And that's honestly, man, that's just how I started to see it. Now, of course, I want to make sure in case some people are listening going, what? It's not 100% of the time. <laughs> Sometimes you get a comment, you're like, man, I'm going to kick your ass, pal. <laughs> because we're just human beings. But even then, I found the best way, this is the new thing I've started doing. I'm such, I am immature in many ways. So if somebody really, really, if somebody really goes in hard with me, I just agree with them in a really over-the-top polite way. Nobody can handle that. And nine times out of ten, they block me. And that block then gives me that adrenaline rush. I'm like, right, sweet. You've done it. We've, 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 won. we've won again. So I don't know how I did that, but I just think, again, one of the oldest adages in the book, I just think approaching it positively, which I did when all of a sudden it came crumbling down a little bit, all of a sudden it was like, a, like an electric circuit. The positivity started to flow back. And you get to the point where you're like, man, just keep saying stuff, man. Just keep talking about it. Just keep enjoying it or not enjoying it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't because there's so many other things in life that are more important. So now, yeah, I, I use it as a way to, I suppose, if I am ever worried that, you know, career is not going in the right direction and, you know, YouTube and social media is very much about being relevant. It just is. I hate that word, but it's true. So now I just use it as, okay, that's more, that's more, uh, you know, coins for that pile. You're still relevant. People still care because they're telling you they want you to fall off a bridge. So let's just, and that's what it is, man. So now I appreciate it. I truly do. And I think it is very much needed and wanted in the world, especially the Western world because of the toxicity, that happy, positive energy, because that's why you get so many views. People are there. People are there, right? All the time listening, consuming your stuff because they want that energy in their life. Because life is hard. Life is difficult. People are rude. People don't open the doors of each other anymore. And it's nice to go somewhere where you know you're going to get, uh, in your own words, a big bald idiot in your, in your own words right. that you That's say right. all the time. <laughs> just, just providing great content. And for those that don't know what, what Simon does, Simon, among many other things, you'll, you'll watch a, a wrestling show and you'll give the ups, the good bits and up, and the down bits are down with the thumbs and stuff. And it's just nice. Even the down bits, you never say, no, oh, fucking shit. You never say, oh, they dropped the ball there. It's like, oh, blah, blah, blah. and you, you you mention it, but there's always something, there's always a positive. There's always a, a yeah. big golden thumb up waiting around the corner. And, um, <laughs> mate, honestly, I, I was a huge fan. I'm telling you, before, to when I, I've always been a wrestling fan, as you know, my, my entire life. And when I retired from boxing, after, you know, some massive setbacks, so I thought, this is what I want to do. And I mentioned it earlier. Um, I didn't want to be the guy who was 80 going, we should have tried it, you know, and I, I threw my heart and soul into it. I saw my AW really quickly. And I'd always, I'd always maintained when I was a wrestling fan, I wanted to be a wrestling fan. I didn't want to know who was dating who backstage. I didn't want to know their real names. To me, the Miz is the Miz. I don't want That's to right. know who's called Mike Mizanin in real life. He's the Miz, right? So like, 
I watch James Bond and for the two hours it's on, I generally think Daniel Craig is James Bond and that's so cool and I'll do the cuff thing he does and I want to be James Bond. The same thing with the Western, right? And then when they come out and they sometimes kind of, you know, break out when, when, when Roman Reigns came out and said he had leukemia and that was really heart rendering, I was like, it takes massive things like that for me to go, oh, this isn't real because I just want yeah, to yeah. eat so much. Um, so that being said, when I uh, became a professional wrestler, I knew everything in front of the curtain that we were allowed to see. I chose to know nothing behind the curtain. I had no idea how things worked. And then I used to watch a lot of videos on YouTube to learn about this side. It's a whole different world of wrestling. And Cody yeah. wrote it to me a long time ago. Being, it's, it's great to be a wrestling fan because wrestling fans are as obsessed with the things in the ring, in front of the screen, as they are behind the screen. So there's two ways you can be a fan. You can be a, an in-ring fan and like a behind the scenes, like, oh no, the a conspiracy fan. Yeah, That's really yeah. cool. Um, and I put them at was man, I'll do this. I was, like, what? I was going to make a point. Oh yeah. So I'm, <laughs> the point I was going to make was my mate, Chris Mayhew, Meza, he, he, he texted me one day. Maybe he even called me. And who calls people nowadays? I think he called me back in 2019. <laughs> That's true. Bear in mind that won the Olympics, uh, medals, Olympic, junior Olympic champion, junior world champion, done all these cool things, strictly come dancing. He went, mate, 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 guess what, guess what, guess what, guess what, guess what? Went, what? Went, Simon Miller's done a video, mate. He's done a Y video. He's done a Y video about you. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And even I, even I was like, really? And I was on my way to, uh, I was commentating that night at Bethnal Green on BT Sport. I just got to the back of the uh, Bethnal Green. I'm on my phone on YouTube. I go, wait, you gotta go, yeah, yeah. I was watching, why? Why, why did I? And that, you also do why videos. You do a big wrestling why. Right? About why and why I became a wrestler and why I. And I was, man, I was so pumped. I was so pumped by that. So, that's so five, cool, man. Thank you so much. Thank but, but, you. The, but the cool thing about yeah. that, man, is, is that you very graciously messaged me after that and you thanked me for that video. And this is why I love life so much. When I got that message, I rang my mate up, who's a big boxing fan, and I went, <laughs> bro. And he go go just sent me a message. So isn't that great? Isn't that great the way it all comes together? And he was like, no, he didn't. I had to screenshot it and send it to him. And he still went, you just sat there photoshopping. I was like, do you really think I have the time to pick Anthony a go-go go? I'm gonna pretend I'm Anthony a go-go. Like, oh dude, I love it. Please, my please pleasure, find dude. that. Please find that screenshot and send it to me so we can put it up on it. Oh, I bet he's got it. I bet he's got it. I'll ask him. So I'll funny. ask him. I bet he's still got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah.